Rumors of my demise have been extremely extraordinarily over-exaggerated. No, tis I, still among the living, much to the consternation of those who would wish to veil the very fabric of deception by which society continues to build mansions of sand, mansions of dust, just awaiting the next wave to take it out, castigating and attacking anyone who mentions the truth that the castle made of sand will fall into the sea, that there's not much anyone can do about it. You better just go along, I guess. Make the best out of a bad situation, as they say. Never mind the reality of the situation. It's what works. Well, for me, it's not what works. It's what lives. What works in death, in destruction, in failure, is of no interest. What succeeds is in eternal terms and uh, no other term. If it doesn't live, it doesn't exist today. If it doesn't succeed, through death, hence death mute, moot, or gone, or irrelevant, if it doesn't somehow excel beyond that point, if it doesn't win the day, if it doesn't inform reality, If it doesn't survive, if it wouldn't even be in the dustbin of history, but dust, because there is no such thing as a dustbin of history, only dust. If that's all that all the screaming and shouting was about in this life, was about how you could somehow make it good here for your brief flicker of an instant 50, 60, 70 years, 80 years maybe, 90, that's nothing. You're still a baby. The wisdom of people 90, still not wisdom. It, it's Every once in a while, there's an extraordinary person that comes along with wisdom that defies the ages. But it's, uh, if it's left to a matter of age, you're still a baby when you're 90. If, you know, learning equals wisdom, you're still a baby when you're 90. You're still, even though people say, oh, there's an old person, respect them, they must be wise. Not necessarily. I know plenty of old fools they haven't learned a damn thing. They're old and they, they're still focused on the material. They're still focused on <clears throat> winning the uh, lotto, playing the ponies, getting a big screen TV. They're still focused on the terrestrial aspects. They're still wanting to go to parties. They still can't have a conversation about Reality, because they can't go back to that moment in time where they bit the bullet, took the devil's uh, bargain, and never looked back, figuring that, well, they're screwed, they might as well enjoy it now. I'm here to tell you that that is primarily the reason the United States now has communists for rulers. 
And, um, you know, they, they took over the Democrat Party. So the Democrat now equals communist. If you're a Democrat, you're a communist. If you're not a communist, then you would not feel comfortable being in the Democrat Party. It's really that simple. So Democrat equals communist equals progressive. All equals Democrat, progressive, et cetera, equals communism and global communism. And that's the force that took over. Feminism equals communism. Greenism equals communism. The green movement is a communist movement. Communism is veiled Satanism, which is totalitarianism, which is a dictatorship based on producing as much human misery as, as, as possible. It is to be fought over. Uh, we have spilled uh, blood and, and risked treasure to destroy communism around the world. And now a communist is in the White House and should not be there, should never have been there in the first place, but is there because the people here thought they would just take the devil's deal and, you know, God wouldn't mind or whatever they thought. There is no God, whatever. In other words, that infiltration, that rejection of God, all that is communism. It was a communist plot to get rid of God. And, um, you know, basically the whole debate you see is between God and the devil. You know, not that republicanism is, 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 uh, godly, but it's more godly. It hasn't been overrun. Look at the way it's vilified. Look at the way Romney is vilified. Look at the way Romney, I'm not, no, well, he's a Mormon. I'm not, I, he believes in God, right? In, in some way, shape or form. I mean, he's not one of them. He's not a godless left rejecter of God, embracer of communism, destroyer of the human spirit. No. Okay, he's not that guy. Okay, I've well, looked him over, looked at his wife, looked at his kids. He's not that guy. But he's being painted as like a, a like square and backwards and out of touch and out of date. And, you know, look at the way they treated Sarah Palin. It goes on and on and on. These are, the more they love freedom in the Constitution, Palin would be an even better example of the way that they are going to treat everybody. And if they could, they would have had her in jail. They would have executed her or burned her at the stake. If they got enough power, they could do that. The next, if Obama gets another term, he will confiscate gun. He will find a way to get the guns. He, you know, he is intent on serving his globalist new world order, which is communism, masters. Communism means, you know, um, well, it would be the end of all of us, wouldn't it? We would not be allowed to embark on free enterprise. We would not be allowed to... Uh, take risks any longer in the marketplace. It would be a corporate world. Obama serves corporations, though he rails against them and vilifies them. He'll select one to vilify, but basically he serves the larger corporate um, globalist corporate interests. And it's not just ignorance. It's basically rebellion. And, you know, these people, like I say, want no freedom. The liberal today is a communist <clears throat> and they want no freedom for anyone. The liberal, I, ironically, the name is liberal, but they want no freedom for anyone. None. They want everything. Reg you can't go to a, a federal land. You can't cross state lines. TSA in your face. This is all coming from the left. Left equals communism. And the reason we're in this predicament we're in right now and fighting for our lives here. And it's going to be a fight because they're intent to, they want to do you in and then they want to punish you. They want to win their election and then they want to punish you for not being one of them. That's Satan. Satan doesn't want anyone who isn't conformed. What we need now is a whole country of nonconformists, amen. We need nonconformity across the board. And, you know, Christians have been complacent and have been, uh, have, have been faithless, gutless, unwilling to risk their lives. He who saves his life, the Lord says, will lose it. They've been safe in their homes and safe with their little middle class existence. Well, now the middle class is threatened by Obama because there is no place for middle class in 
a totalitarian regime. It's just basically the rulers and the slaves. That's it. The Democrat Party wants to enslave the entire world if they could. And they could do it through taxation. They can do it through regulation. They would like to outlaw all federal lands, for example. They would like to make it so that um, you are not allowed outside your city unless on public transportation. Something that, or and, and ultimately, the whole purpose is to destroy humanity completely. And that's the spirit of the communist or Democrat or progressive or green person to not help Mother Nature, but to exclude man from Mother Nature, to exclude man's right to be on the planet at all. Uh, case in point, kids putting up lemonade stands. Case in point, um, you know, people growing organic tomatoes in their front yards or whatever, rather than a lawn and having the police come by and uh, fine you. That's not America. That's a totalitarian regime. Now they're trying to come after oil drillers and, and through fracking saying it's caused all these earthquakes in the Midwest. Therefore, you know, try to to build up a pretext so Obama can shut it down. And, um, you know, there's just no end to what they'll do. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they have a green solution. They, you know, they would rather just have you sit there in your house and, you know, and walk. And, and I wonder, you know, all of what I've just mentioned is un-American. Un-American. <coughs> America <coughs> being, um, you know, a place that you could say God-given rights, God-given freedoms. Okay? The Constitution, Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights. A place where God has given the rights, not man. A special place indeed. Well, they want to destroy it all. And what have the Christians here done? They should be fighting tooth and nail and should have been vocal from the beginning. They've done nothing because the churches have made a deal with the devil who is running communism. So therefore, they can't be counted on to be on the front lines. Now can they? Not if they're conformed to this god-awful slave state. So what is the matter with you people? I told you how wealth is created. Wealth is created when somebody takes a risk with capital and investment to create something to fulfill a need in society that, that had not been fulfilled before or wasn't being fulfilled. They take a calculated risk to fulfill that need. And when it succeeds, wealth is created. Wealth expands, jobs are created, people are hired, and the business grows. That's you know, that's like watering a plant. That's, that's very natural. That's very much God's natural path of order. That uh, you have a, a free marketplace and if I have, um, you know, figs that from my trees and you have grains and you want figs and I want grains, we exchange. And to the extent that I can grow more figs, the wealth is expanded. I mean, it's very, very simple. But what this government has done is made people dependent on it. And, and in exchange for your vote, they will give you stuff from the rich. But the rich are bailed out of this country. What they're not telling you is the deficit is so high, no rich man or a group of rich people could pay it back. So they want to tax the rich. And when confronted with the idea that even if you taxed everybody more, it still wouldn't pay for the deficit, they go, we know that. We just want to do it anyway because it will destroy business and investment and it will lose jobs, which is the whole point. Every time someone loses a job, they get another vote. The Democrats equal communism. The Democrats are the communists today. 
didn't used to be that way, but that's the way it's become. Let me, let me just line it up for you. They want to destroy the economy so that people become dependent on them. They want to take over industry so that there is no free market. They want to take over the healthcare industry so that nobody has a choice in healthcare and death panels are created. They want to confiscate all guns. They want to put people into cities and compact cities and government housing and prevent them from being able to go into nature. They want to stop all private transportation and provide only public. And they want to control everything from cradle to grave. Am I getting it, Democrats? And you people that are disaffected, just change like me. Be a libertarian. Be independent. You know, just you, you should disaffiliate yourself if you are a Democrat, if you think it was about the little guy. If you still think that old paradigm of the Democrat Party from the 60s or something, you have to understand that's not the party. Today, it's the Communist Party. Period. There is no other interpretation. It's just that you haven't caught up yet. You haven't opened your eyes yet. You haven't seen the truth of it. I think I'm actually, I don't even actually know what I am. Um, but in terms of libertarian principle, I, I, I seem to fit more into that because, no, I don't want to moralize what people do. What people do in their bedrooms and what they do in their private lives and so forth, I mean, I can preach about it. But I don't want to regulate what they do. No. Uh, let them have free will choice to sin or not sin. It's far be it for me to go in and police them. How uh, ministers of the gospel got to be seen as fuddy-duddy policemen, that's disgusting to me. Only Satan could have done something like that. Let's see. Oh, that came from the church system. So I felt a sense in a way over the years of alienation, a sense of uh, a sense of uh, you know just just aloneness, you know that I couldn't really you know people I couldn't really trust because you know before you know it they would be you know the next thing a demon would be talking out their mouth. And you could see that they weren't free. And then they wanted to, they were being used to get you. How many people like became my friend that were used to get to me because Satan objects to my being uh, defiantly independent. When I say defiantly independent, I mean spiritually independent. In other words, no, I'm not going to bow down to the world in order so that I can go to Walmart without getting, you know, people harassing me or whatever it is they do in the spirit. That's all it, all that comes from the spirit. Thank God for, uh, you know, that whole thing was put to rest with me. I kind of found peace with it via Jonathan Clack and, you know, the way he explained uh, how the, the all-seeing eye operates through the group. So you could be going somewhere totally unrelated, and this goes to gang stalking, to answer your gang stalking problems, um, you know, and they can just start in harassing you uh, in a totally foreign place where you don't know them. And it's like it's almost directed at you. And it's not. It's the demonic in them. They're being used by the enemy, i.e. the all-seeing eye, for the enemy to then come at you. People are used to come at you, and they don't even know you. But they will, they will, they will just function in that way because they themselves have already bowed down to that reality. They're already conformed to the satanic society reality. If you're conformed to satanic society, you are simply... You don't even exist. You're dead. The twice born amongst us, and there aren't that many, but the twice born amongst us are harassed by the all seeing eye. They're, you know, any group of humans anywhere, the gas station, the market place, the, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the workplace, they can, they turn into, the, they, they get used as a hive. Or they'll come up to you and say something non sequitur or, you know, or cough and make noises. Whatever it is they do, you know, that's, that's of a, or block your cart or, you know, get in the way so you can't get out of your parking space. You know, all of that kind of stuff is orchestrated um, by the demonic um, against you. And the people that are used to do it are weak. They're slaves. 
you know, you got to look at them and just start laughing. I mean, th these people think they have some reward. No, the only reward they're going to have is they're going to burn, man. And they know it. But they can't fight. You see, they've already bowed down, so they can't fight it when it comes over them. They don't even know they're being used. They, they, they can be just moved around and moved in your face and say hostile things, and they don't even know they're doing it. They have no ability to fight back. I've had one of them one time apologize to me, you know, when I called him on it. And, uh, you know, the targets are those who, um, you know, love freedom. Those who love truth. Those who love God. Those who love the way. Those who understand it's not about us. Those who are, uh, are, have submitted themselves to God and are being led by him. The tests we have are that they will coalesce wherever you go. And nothing you can do about it. Yeah, they, they could potentially kill you. I mean, there's, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's just uh, like, like the, the poor chap that got beaten up by the hive, by the group that attacked him over in uh, Baltimore. And they laughed while they, they stripped him naked on the sidewalk. I mean, they thought that was funny. And they took his watch and took his stuff. They are just horrible abuse what they did to this guy. And, um, you know, it was just a group. The whole group was a psychopath. And they're being used because all those people that were all black, by the way. And there was one white guy and, and the perpetrators were all black, as we've seen more and more thanks to Obama, who's, who's saying that Trayvon would look like, if he had a son, he would look like Trayvon. And that was the go signal for race riots and whatnot. Uh, it's so easy to see. It's so simple. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it, it, you know what? It's amazing to me. I predict it's going to happen and then it does. But on the way people d disagree, I'm going, well, you can disagree all you like, but the fact of the matter is, in the end, you're going to be wrong and I will be right on the prediction. Because if God showed me the prediction, then it's going to be right. You know, it's going to happen. So far, anyway, at least the trend of all the things I've been saying has gone spot on. <clears throat> and I'm here to tell you about another trend. There's also a big backlash. There is a big backlash against the satanic state and against those who embrace it. You know, the, 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 um, the godless immoral left and the godless immoral um, progressives on the right who are trying to also take over the, the entire, you know, because on the right you have the problem of being militaristic and you have the neocons and the sort of this idea of manifest destiny everywhere forever thinly veiled as oh it's god's will but it's really their will you know that that you do have that extreme on that side and uh you know not neither that nor the left nor this predatory um you know y y use of military power to expand uh adventures and operations and take over territories and imperialism you know either one is um obviously of satan but I can tell you this, that, that it's now down to the Democrat policy. It's just basically communism across the board. No, it didn't used to be that way. It wasn't that way <laughs> in the time of Jack Kennedy. I mean, Kennedy today would be... Um, considered a, a conservative so you know that's kind of basically where it is um you know this fight that goes on cannot be solved the idea of how actual communists got into the white house the state department the pentagon the secret service the cia colleges as professors is beyond me 
until I look at all the people that conform to Satan while pretending to be with God, going to their churches, thinking they're good society people, while this whole thing, their entire future and their kids' future and the whole thing they say they cherish when they saluted the flag was ripped out from under them because of their behavior, which they thought was in secret, but was shouted from the rooftop seen by all now. Yes, submitting to Satan is a very singular personal affair, isn't it? With the mother goddess and the... The being made from a loser to go to a winner. The sheen, the, 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 the glow that you get, <laughs> you know, the... The connection, the, how things just fall into place, it seemed. It seemed it was so easy before. No, the original of all that, of what you thought you had, is God's way. But it was obscured because, because the church went the same way as the satanic rock star. And then you know, kept that under wraps while doing a surfacey church thing, and God hated that. The Lord told me he would bless me. The Lord told me he would bless our people. That is, he would provide for them. He would honor them, provide for them, protect them feed them, clothe them, and guide them on to Zion, to eternal life. He would walk them out, you know, through this whole horrible conundrum of the earth right now and the horrible need to totalitarianism and human misery that's going on. And he would walk them and deliver our people out. That's why he is the Messiah. He would guide our people to the promised land of Zion. And so far as I've seen, every generation he's done just that. And, well, it's all become confused because, you know, Jesus has been used by the black community as, you know, liberation theology. In other words, that Jesus is black and that you know, basically the black man should rule the earth. And the only reason that the, the white man is of Satan with blonde hair and blue eyes. And these these are of Satan. And that's why Hitler revered them. And uh, these are the ones that have to be killed in order so the black man can, you know. So you can see it's a recipe for, for murder, for, for death. And um, and it's a, it's a justification of all the violence of black on white that you see going on. So liberation theology, which was also some of that taught by Catholic priests, in South America and so forth, um, to the peoples there. So the oppressed people of the earth will one day take over because God really loves them more than anyone else. And, um, you know, and they'll have their day. So long as they have racial divisions, they can go like that. But the minute, that's why Farrakhan was out there saying, well, you know, you can't intermarry black people and white people because uh, because then you th then the black race is gone, and I'm here to say, go ahead and intermarry. <laughs> if that will get a guy like that to shut up, all the better. The politics of racial division that these guys, these false preachers, Jackson, Sharpton, Farrakhan, and all the rest like them, all that is done is kept black people down and segregated as some racial thing and 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 created the whole racist vibe. All they've done is foment racism and hatred and suspicion of black people toward any anyone else, especially any white person. You know, they don't want intermarrying. And nothing in the Bible that says you can't intermarry. 
And the white supremacists also don't want intermarrying because they want to control the white people. But I'm here to say I don't see myself as white or black or anything. Go ahead, intermarry. Had Trish been black, it wouldn't have mattered. You know, the funny thing, the guy who's trying to be blacker than anybody else, meaning I'm black, a racist black, I, I'm black, really black, and there's divisions between me and any white person, is Obama, who happens to be half, you know, white. And, um, but you wouldn't know that. To, there is no real blending. I guess I would encourage his daughters to go ahead and marry as the whitest people they can find. But, I mean, that's ridiculous. Of course, that won't solve anything, right? Because racism is communist. It, they need it to keep going. The people in the black community that are controlling it are the Democrats slash communists who have to keep them together as a race, keep them down and, 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 and under the thumb, keep them an obedient voting block, so that they can get their new world order in, which has nothing to do with race. And when they find out what they've been participating in, the black people that is, they will be horrified. And <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm all for uh, racial intermarriage um, because I don't see, I only see one race, the human race. Black, white, green, red, doesn't matter. Marry whoever you want. What the hell? Have your children. It won't make a difference. Because you see, these divisions are Satan. He has made the divisions. The only people that are invested in race are Satanists who wish to control. Now I work myself up into a lather here. I'm all ready to drop out of this whole thing. I don't really relate to it. I'm just kind of like here, like I told my uh, a friend yesterday, I said, you know, I'm just along for the ride, you know, at this point. I want to do what the Lord is kind of telling me to do, which is to tell you that you have got to, it's very important that you Seek the Lord while he can be found. That you submit to Jesus and tell him, you know, basically you're a sinner and that you need his help because you cannot solve your problem on your own. Your problem is that you have the death sentence on your head. And if you do nothing about it, you will be thrown into the uh, wine press of God and just mulched under for the next batch. In other words, you'll be gone. There will be nothing of you. I mean, this you can't consider this 80, 80 plus years, if you're lucky, um, to be a life. It's not enough time. It's not even enough time to grow wise. You need at least uh, 150 years or 200 years or however long it is to grow wise. You don't have it. People used to live a lot longer in the old days than they do today. Modern science is, you know doing all it can do to cause people to live even less. They used to live 200 years plus. Yep. Well, you know, Abraham, how long did uh, Abraham's, Abraham's father live 200 years? But I mean, you know, and you can say, well, that's a myth. That's just all myth. And no, it's not. It's, it was matter of fact about the length of time people lived back in those days was uh, not legendary. It was common. The big myth is that through modern science, we are living longer. No, we are not. We are living shorter and shorter lives. And, uh, you know, it, was, it got to an all-time short, short time during the time of the plague in the Middle Ages and stuff. People might live to 40, 45 years old. But again, that's barely enough time to do, you know, you just woke up and boom, you're dead. So what are you going to do? You've got to find a way to live. You've got to go to the Father, to the Source, to the Creator, to the Light. You have to be, I am, I mean, I am is the way it works is this, like John 17. I am, He in me, me in Him as one. So there's just I am. 
ultimately. And, uh, you know, that sort of even defies the idea that there's a subject-object relationship between us and God. There isn't. But we, we create that because we have multiplicity. We have, I say, hello, you. There's a subject. Hello, I'm saying to you. But there's no difference between us in the end. There is just I am. You see what I mean? I'm talking to myself. We know this. We're not stupid. Like my f- a friend said, well, Lao Tzu said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, or whatever, or some statement, or whatever Jesus, he's, something Jesus said, 500 years before Jesus. And the answer to that is, well, that's because Jesus created him to say that and gifted him. But the Jesus that I serve pre-existed Lao Tzu and pre-existed this world and in fact made Lao Tzu and gave him his wisdom. Oh, well, what God do you serve then? I am. Yes, he pre-existed all humans who ever uttered anything. And yet, everything every human was going to utter, he already knew before the act of creation. Everything that would ever happen and everyone who would ever exist, he already knew. In fact, he knew it in a timeless time where time does not exist, where it's already happened before a million, billion, trillion, infinite a number of times. And yet just once. We're not stupid, those of us lambs. We are given this knowledge that others don't have. We're given the whole thing like a, like a, like a, All at once. And some of us can utter it and articulate it and others can't. But that's why we're made the priests. We're made the, you know, yes, we're the priests in exile. To tell you about Yahweh, the I am. And what is this world and where is the world going to? And in the end... Yahweh deals with you, I am, there is no me. In the end, I am, and there is no you. So somehow, this wedding must take place. This wedding, the, 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 the wedding of the lamb, must happen. The lamb's bride must wed to the lamb, or all is lost. You are all I am. Therefore, you must consummate with the I am or you are not. Now that's putting it in spiritual terms that anyone of any faith, any tradition, any esoteric tradition, any secret society, anyone anywhere should have understood what I just said. Without being twice born, that is, born of the Spirit, that is, God exists in you, right? Consummation, wedding, intercourse, child, understand? Without that occurring, (coughs) which is an experience that you experience, Your eyes would not be open and you cannot comprehend what I'm saying. You cannot understand what it means. You can know everything about God and the Bible and all that, but if you're not twice born, it's all for nothing. Twice born means you were consummated, initiated. You've gone through the ultimate initiation of of all the secret societies want, what they're never going to get. You and God are one. There is no apotheosis necessary because you and God are one. You are one with all things that ever were created or ever will be. 
You are all of those things and none of those things at the same moment. It is too profound to put into words and it's too mind-boggling to think of, but you are that. As the Buddhists love to say, no separation. No, there's no separation. Therefore, you would be at peace. <coughs> well, I would be at peace politically, but you have to understand something. I have not gotten anywhere by complacency and looking the other way and letting other people define what politics is to me and say, well, Jeff, I disagree with you on this and this is where I think on this. It's like, well, I don't care what you think. This is the way it is for me. I state it. There's nothing you can say that would influence me one iota because this is the way I see it based on, I don't know how many reams and reams of information that I processed and you're offering nothing new. Nothing I haven't heard before. So this is, this is where I see it. I see communism is, I guess I could say this, communism is ignorance. Ignorance kills. And most of the, the people that are recruited into these things like Occupy Wall Street, these are very ignorant people, spiritually dead. And, 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 and you can see they, they just don't have a clue about even why they're even breathing. They haven't put the time in. It's just, they, they just think of everything in terrestrial, in physical terms. That was my problem with a lot of the hippies. The hippies just saw things, they were the most carnal people of all. Everything was about sensation and feeling and what you think and your subjectivity and what you're doing. And I'm like, man, hello, wake up. You're worse than the cats on Wall Street. Oh, you're the beautiful hippies, but you're not spiritual. You're material. And so what happened? The hippies became yuppies. And now the hippies are all, you know, they're well-to-do and they, they run all these industries that were all started up back in the 60s. It's horrifying. And Satan is laughing all the way to the bank because they all made a deal with the devil because hippiedom was a initiation center and right into Satanism. And that's what it was in the very beginning. That's what it's always been. Oh, you had your Maharishi Mahesh yogis and transcendental meditation, getting your mantra and all those kind of things, alternative religions, the rise of cults, Charlie Manson, you know, the Beatles, um, you know, uh, the whole counterculture and all that, all material and all run by communists, period. You started to get me now. Communism equals Satanism equals materialism equals ignorance equals the way of death equals destruction, totalitarianism, lack of freedom as what liberalism means is we want to take away all your freedom. Liberalism equals no freedom. Yeah, but you can be gay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, no, you have to be. See, that's the difference. You must be. If you want to be a, a, in the Democrat Party, you have to be something. Take your choice. You can't be like a Ken and Barbie doll like Mitt Romney and his wife. The most horrifying thing of all, one of the beautiful, most beautiful things of all was actually seeing my daughter's reaction to Disney, Disney World in Florida. We were there on a very cloudy day. There was hardly anyone there. Like, there was no lines. You could just... The place was crumbling, falling apart. The staff that used to be all well-trained, they were cracking jokes. And, you know, the, the, the whole thing was tawdry and awful. It was the most disgusting thing I'd ever seen in my life. Horrible, despicable, shouldn't even be there. Because I know what it represents. I see it... You see, with me, when you encounter me, if you ever do, while well, you are here, I only see you in the spirit. I don't see you as your circumstances. I, I assess whether you're going to hurt me or not. 
um, you know, and, or try, or is it, if it's a ruse or you're being used by Satan, because most people are. So usually they fail the test and then I move on. But, um, well, they, they fail the test. They're not being their own human. You know, they're not there on their own. They're not, they don't have sovereignty. You'd be surprised how many people that claim Jesus and Christian and all that stuff, and they don't have a clue. They are just being used to be like us. They imitate you so they can, you know, manipulate you, whatever. At the end of the day, I can tell you, if you're a slave, I don't care whether you're in a, you know, a, a half a million dollar entrance fee country club, anesthetized from the world, totally successful, driving around boats and Ferraris and planes and things. If you're not free, it's all for nothing. If that all came by way of slavery, it's no, no, it's nothing. You know, one good tornado and it's gone you're still going on to death. You still are not in, in a position to meet your maker. You still are not slated to be consummated with the I am almighty. And if you don't have that, you don't have anything. We of the I am have everything. You, with all your material things, have nothing. If I have material things, that's great. I do have material things. Lots of them. But I know they, they do. What can I do with them? I can, can I eat them? Well, no, I have no problem putting food on the table. Could I eat them? I put food on the table. I eat it. If I... Um, I, I, I fixed the roof recently, just, just recently here, and had the guys, you know, do a technique so I didn't have to re-roof, which really saved a lot of money. And that was really cool. They put this uh, material on that would give us uh, probably another few, another five years, maybe, you know, but well worth it, you know. And, and that's the type of thing God likes to see, you know, being a good steward, not just throwing a new roof on because you can, but trying to keep your powder dry and find the best deal. And you know what I mean? Do stuff you could do with by yourself and, you know, right. Well, used to be anyway in America, that's the way people thought. Anyway, but I can't eat the roof. No, I'm thrilled there's a roof there. I'm thrilled. I mean, you know, Trish and I, for, for, for years, we would just be amazed that we had a roof at all. You know, and you know how circumstances would work so that we had a roof. And so every day we're like, and like even now, any kind of thing that I have right now, I just thank God. I'm like, I can't believe it. The Lord has blessed me so much, it's, it's just beyond belief. All I can do is just say, thank you, Lord. I have no idea except, but Lord, I'll just do whatever you want me to do, whichever way you want me to go. I would like to open the eyes of those around me or help them to see that no matter how successful you are, no matter how healthy you are, you're still going to die. You still got to be twice born if you want to live. And twice born is not something you just claim like the, the idiots do on TV. You, you can't say, oh, I'm born again. I was saved on January 3rd, 1925. And, and now I'm, I'm, you've been born again. And, you know, and then you talk to them. They don't have a clue what's going on. They can't wait to get, uh, you know, they can't wait to get that big screen TV or whatever it is. I mean, it's just endless, 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 endless. So we, we battle more ignorance amongst our own, if you will, than out in the world. People that say they're saved but are not. If you're saved, something has happened to you. 
something that shifts your perspective. I mean, you hold on. It's like you do the best you can, but the world just becomes something that's not too solid. It's just a byproduct. You know, I'm like I told a friend, I'm along for the ride. I mean, there are opportunities that have fallen in my lap and I'm doing, you know, things and then there's things that are trying to kill those opportunities at the same time. And I'm watching it like a movie and I'm going, wow, I could be killed over here, you know, materially. And I could be blessed over there. And it looks like, gee, you can't really take anything for granted because there's always something that's trying to come up and, and, and unbless you, you know? So you just have to remain kind of humble. I mean, you know, that, that, you know, without God meaning humble means when you know, it's not, it's not about you. That's the first lesson of humility. It's not about me. And the second part is, it's not about me. Anything that I have that's good, anything that has come my way, is God's purpose. He has a purpose in it, and it's because he's done it. Especially with me, um, I look at my life, and I look at the blessings I've had of you know, having been, um, you know, protected from the, you know, there are some really horrible, horrific forces after, after us and, and, you know, really, you know, like, like doing, um, criminal acts to, to kill us and stuff. I mean, just terrible things all because we weren't with Satan, you know, it's like, whoa. And, um, there's no way I could have gotten through all that without, um, him, And then, you know, material blessings we've had, it's like, okay, Lord, you know, I did nothing to, um, to get these things, you know, you've done it all. I've done nothing. I've just kind of along for the ride and it becomes kind of surreal. It becomes sort of like, okay, you want to be a good steward and do the things, the right things with what God has entrusted you and, and with, with the, the way that he's entrusted us and the things he's entrusted us with, and you want to just keep yielding yourself to that. It's not about me, about you. which way, Lord. And, and, you know, and then more humility comes in when you go, Lord, I don't know the way. If you don't guide me, nothing will be guided. Just guide me. I'm sorry. Don't let me get a big head over this. I didn't deserve it. I did nothing to deserve it. Any wealth I have, I did nothing to deserve that. Every opportunity that's come my way, I didn't do anything to deserve that. I don't deserve it. I mean, none of us. So, okay, so Lord, what do you want me to do then? Well, let me advise you on how to proceed forth. Okay, Lord, advise me and I'll just, and I'll go like that. (laughs) Advise me. Please advise me. And that's about all we can do. But taking it for granted, of course, is ridiculous. Because see, I see in every, in every blessing, in every piece of economic good news, let's say for the for the nation, for for industries, like say, the oil and gas industry, you know, and private lands in say Oklahoma, okay, which has put a lot of people to work. Well, I also see the USGS has a study that says that those people drilling on those private lands are causing earthquakes. And they want to start pushing this as a way of putting pressure to regulate, which would means regulation just means putting private citizens out of business. That's all it means. It doesn't mean it means government takeover is what it means. Okay, so you see already they may be prospering like in North Dakota because of the private oil drilling. And there's 3% unemployment in North Dakota because of this very same issue. That, you know, entrepreneurs are they're leasing private lands to, to, to drill because there's a great need for, for petroleum right now. But the government doesn't want anything, any of it. And, you know, so Obama will be taking credit, but he's empowering the USGS to do this study to justify his confiscation and his moratorium on all drilling anywhere, everywhere. Because... They don't want man to be in nature or in federal lands and they don't want him drilling. Yet, if you were to invent free energy like Tesla energy, you already did it. 
you know, cars that would run on nothing. They would kill you to hide the patent, you know, to hide it. So they make sure the patent would never come, it would never go into production. That's not what this is about. It's all about control. That's what alternative, alternative energy is run by communists. Meanwhile, Obama pays Brazil $2 billion, gives them our oil rigs, and says, go ahead and drill, baby, drill, Brazil, and we'll buy from you. So he's not against it. He just wants to punish Americans because he's not an American. He is the enemy of the state. He's the enemy of the Constitution. He's the enemy of the Declaration of Independence. But so are, is the Democrat Party that, be, that backs him. They are enemies of freedom, enemies of the Constitution, enemies of the United States of America. Period. That's why I don't let them in the House. Oh, no, I, you know, the, the, I minister to people when they're ready. I don't really care what their affiliation is. But in general, politically, no, I don't let, um, I don't, well, most communists are repulsed by me, meaning um, liberals. I don't let them near me, no. Uh, it's just because... Um, it's not, a, you know, it's more like let the dead bury the dead. You know, it's not really a personal thing. I just have a policy that I really don't want them. Um, here, they, they cloud the work. They, somehow something happens where, where the distract, you know, the, the work of the Lord doesn't happen. So he, he keeps them away from me. You know, he, he understands that, um, you know, all, because all there would be would be just, you know, I had somebody here that was like that. He was a, a liberal who was a new ager, who was, um, you know, some sort of, uh, he said he was, a, he's a, he was a, a priest in the order of Melchizedek, but didn't believe in Jesus or that Jesus was um, God or anything like that. I mean, doesn't believe in the way, you know, and, and was here wanting, wanting to initiate me into his way and wanting me to conform to the world at, at, at his, uh, behest or something to that effect, you know, and, and it was like, oh, not this again. So we're going to go through this sort of mano a mano big fight here. You're there and you, you're acting like I know, I don't know diddly squat. So you're there and I'm the dumb idiot that's here that needs to be initiated and brought up into the real world of knowledge and reason that you've got because you say Lucifer, um, is here to complete the work that God did do right. And you're an emissary of Lucifer, but we'll keep that secret because I'm a dumb idiot that doesn't know anything. So let's be gentle with him and see if we can bring him up into uh, adulthood. And then I'm looking at this guy and thinking he's a total baby and because he knows nothing. He has, knows less than nothing. High pre the first thing they did, this couple, when they were here, they go up to my tabernacle that I built for Yahweh himself, which which then he promised me protection of the whole land and that the people that shouldn't be here will be moving away. And they all did. You know, people that were, I don't know. It's like, I don't even know you. You have, you know, you want to drive, <laughs> never mind. You want, to, you want to get in my face, a neighbor that lives, you know, that I have to use binoculars to see their house, that you come here and tell me how to live. You've got to be kidding. Those kind of people, right? Those busybody communists, okay? They basically moved, they, the Lord moved them all out of here. Everyone that was a threat moved away. I mean, the, the, no, the, I'm sure that there are people here. There's one guy that built the road here. I like him, but he had a sticker on his, on his van a long time ago that said, you know, so many Christians, so few lions. That was his attitude, but he's not a threat. See what I mean? He was never a threat. I'm talking about demonically. The, oh, the contest here. We exist in the spirit, and I just see everything as spiritual warfare. Everything is is uh, is how we are in the spirit with each other, not how we are. It's not about what I say to you or what you say to me. It's what's going on while we're saying it. You know that. And that's the world I live in. And that's the only world I can live in because otherwise I wouldn't be able to find my way. You know, uh, how else would I get the only, survival? The only way that I could survive is if God goes, turn left. 
turn right, stay here, you know, keeps the reins on tight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, thank you. People say, well, I want more communions. And it's like, you know what's happened? A lot of people have sprung up doing these sort of cyber communions. And I've just been kind of turned a little bit off on that. And, and I've encouraged you to have your communions with your friends and families. And, and you know, but I, I will be back. But again, I can't do anything. You, you seem to keep thinking that Zeph is some sort of leader. I'm nothing. I can't, I'm so weak compared to the average person that I, I can't do anything unless he tells me. You know, it's enough that I used to go to, you know, someone would want me to come to their house for dinner and we'd go and then they get mad. And it's like, well, then why even? I, I got to the point where I said, Lord, I just don't want to even go through the exercise of going to someone's house for dinner and then having them get mad when it when it, it doesn't, you know, they have some plan or some thing. And I'm like, you don't understand. I'm like the angel of death. Don't you understand that? You don't curse me. I don't want to give you a chance to curse me. I've been around this for thousands and thousands of years. And yet, you know, I have the life like you, just like what you see. But continually going through this, and here I am now kind of leaking into the spiritual realm. And, um, well, there's the end of the material. And here's the spiritual, thousands of years. What does he mean by that? What I mean by that is that I exist outside of time as well. And I have other functions as well and other things I do. Though I'm here talking to you as a human. And bizarre. I, it's beyond my ability to comprehend. I just, but I just, you know, sometimes it just kind of bleeds through. And, um, but back to this, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, if we, what I hate is getting together with people and then, you know, it's like, you can't be disappointed. I will bring communion. I will bring the Lord. I bring the light. I bring the hope. I want to pray. I want to, I want to do those things. I want to keep that conversation. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into some tawdry thing. I'm not going into carnality. If we get together and break bread, we're talking about the Lord. It's just, there's nothing more exciting to me than that. That to me is it. There is no kind of, I don't know. You see what I mean? I mean, I shouldn't have been a human to begin with. I guess what people want is they want to put their tent stakes down and they want to have their sense of a la familia and, and basically eat each other. You know, I mean, you know, kind of like it's symbolically, but I mean, just sort of feed on each other. And um, I say feed on the light of Christ. Drink the living water freely. Eat the flesh, drink the blood, embrace, come together as a family under Christ. But, you know, if you want all of us to jump into the sin thing with you, then it's going to be like real disappointing. And then and if it's going to be like something set up like that and then people get angry, then you really didn't want Jesus anyway. You really didn't want the Holy Spirit you didn't want those things. You wanted to get down and party hardy or something. You know, I, the point is, is that uh, to me, nothing is real. No thing that man can do amongst man is real. Only the spirit is real. And that makes me a very... Why do they invite, no, I, I know it's a good question. Why do they invite you then into their um, company if it's just going to become a contest 
and beyond, and, you know, between God and the devil or whatever, using us humans. I don't know, because the enemy is always going to try to invite lambs in because, first of all, they get money. That's a big motivation. And, 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 you know, and if you can turn one, you know, but I've never seen, you know, the, my brethren can't be turned. People just get mad at them. I'm just thinking one sister in particular now. They just get mad at her. No? Yeah. Well, do you always want to be treated like a guest? And the thing is, I don't care. I don't get to the point of thinking that way. If someone treats me as a guest, or, or as opposed to what? A lover? You know, if, ironically, I was born into a family that where orgies were pretty much common, commonplace. Probably, you know, and funnily enough, I um, was repulsed by the whole thing through abuse or through whatever happened when I was a very young child. Um, I just shut down to it all. And of course, my parents were so upset with that. So upset that I ruined the party because I just wouldn't get with it. It was No, I was scarred from an early life through abuse, what, which is what shut me down, which is, was God's way of, that made me the person I am today. So, you know, then, well, then you should commit suicide. Why? Because I don't want to celebrate the flesh. Because I don't, and, 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 you know, I do sins all the time of, you know, from my flesh. And so it's uh, being perfect. No, being goody two shoes, not at all. There's a certain thing, a certain thing in the spirit when it gets going that, that is, is kind of happens when all that's starting to happen. And um, uh, it, I, just, I go into war. That's where people get tagged. And that's where feelings are hurt. And that's where divisions happen. And that's where friends are no longer friends. And that's that place of war. I pick up a sword and I'll tell you, that's the angel of death thing. Everyone is, you know, basically the whole battlefield is slain. All tagged. They all have a chance to then repent. But I mean, it goes to that if it gets pushed. Don't want it pushed. I don't like it. What's the Lord doing with tagging? He's telling people, I, the Lord, exist. You uh, do not exist as God. And, you know, you need to get right deal with me. You have about six months to do it or I'll, be, I'll take you out of here. You know, um, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's like all they have to do is repent. He's actually giving them a way to repentance, meaning to change direction and align with I am the, the truth so they can be set free. <laughs> People think, oh, well, if you tag someone, you curse them. It's like you curse them with that's like with a, that, that's ridiculous. It's a blessing. It means your game is now over. You need to stop and turn around. Funny, I was going to tell you the same thing, Z. Well, aren't we cute now out here on the playground? Aren't we having some fun? Which reality is real? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'll tell you what. You know, if the mirror breaks, you're false. And if I don't break... <laughs> I'll be left standing. You don't cast a reflection in my mirror. That's weird. That makes you a vampire. And you want me to jump in there with you and be a part of death and you're willing to pay me trinkets to do so. But if I'm in there with you as death, then I got to hunt for somebody else to do the same thing to or I don't get to run around the playground. The whole thing is a slave state. I'm here to open the door let, and let Jesus minister to you all and have everyone go free if possible. 
the only freedom is Christ. The only truth is Christ. The only um, state of grace is Christ. The only consciousness that knows all things is Christ. The only thing there is is I am and nothing else is. So you see, that's my source, that's my daddy, that's my, um, where I come from, that's where I'm going. I'm all about that. And that's the only thing that's going to work around me. And Trish, and my friends. Funny how in the past, it used to be so lopsided the other way, and now, of course, it's not. It's all unstable now. <laughs> I think a lot of the conservatives who are truly conservative and seeking truth are, are really conservative, meaning you, a conservative would be like someone that would preserve the Bible, right? That would be a conservative thing to do. A conservative would be someone that bows down before God. A conservative would be someone that would say, it's not about me, but about you, Lord. You know, these are conservative principles. I stand on the Bible's teachings of how to live. Therefore, I would be a conservative because I want to conserve the way of truth in the, in the Torah and in Jesus' teachings. And, in, and I also agree that the Bible is a holy book and a supernatural document where People throughout the ages were used to edit it and do this and that, but God had his hand on the whole process. It's really his work. So therefore, it's, it's, it's the word of God can be accessed through the Bible so I can encounter it and, and experience then the word. You know, and I have to say, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to destruction, and a house divided against is uh, a house that fails. And a house that falls. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. It's really very simple. Therefore, you know, with Jesus' teaching about this, we see that evil, corrupt leaders will try to divide and conquer. Obama is the perfect example of someone using the principle of divide America to conquer America. I know of no eviler man in this world than Obama. I don't know of a single human being on this planet that is, that is more evil than Obama and that's, take your bloodiest dictators. And it's not because he's a Democrat. It's not because he's half white, half black, whatever. I could care less. I know of no human being that has a stronger demonic signature and the backing of very powerful witches than Obama. And I know of no one who will bring human misery to a level for Americans, for whether you're rich or poor or in between, the level of pain that Obama would bring with another term would be you would suffer the same as they suffered in Nazi Germany. Maoist China, which is, they love Mao, you know that. Or Stalinist Russia. Or, or, or uh, oppressive Cuba. 
or oppressive Venezuela. I know of no human being upon the earth who is more backed by big money. Not Romney. Obama is backed by much bigger players than Romney. Much more zillionaires, trillionaires. The people that have all the marbles are backing him because they want you enslaved and them free and they don't want you walking around drilling on private lands in the earth going on your vacations uh seeing you know the, the single-handedly obama with the gas prices uh oh, trish was telling me she saw a program last night that was sarah palin and eric bolding is his name bowling bolding Eric Bowling, who was a he was an oil and gas he was in the oil and gas industry, and and uh, Sarah Palin on Fox um, News, I believe. But they had a one hour special on energy where Sarah Palin and him got together to present the case of how we could easily solve our energy problems and get people into prosperity here in America and get everyone back to work. And um, you know, wondered took it right to the president and said, Mr. President, why aren't you doing any of these things? And the answer, uh, Ms. Palin and uh, Mr. Bowling, is this. The reason that they don't do these things is because it's not about oil independence. Or rather, ener- I'm sorry, ener- energy independence. It is not even about green energy. It's about control and destruction of the individual, Period. It's playing out with physical things like we really want green energy and they, they, we're at war with the combustion engine and we won't, don't want to drill into Mother Nature anymore and all that. And they'd even like to eradicate humans from the entire planet, but that's another story. That's, of course, Satan. And, of course, that would be Obama. The whole point of the moratorium on drilling in the Gulf was so he could enrich his friends to go drill in Brazil. It's outrageous. He should be in jail for, he should be shot for treason already. But then again, so should many others. Um, Well, that's what they did to the Rosenbergs. Uh, How is, like, well, Bill Clinton giving the secrets to Chinese? Same thing. But they're not. Somehow they're protected. The more they destroy America, the more they're lauded. Um, I've, Come increasingly, I, I, it, it, it was, that doesn't disturb me. I'm just saying, can't anyone see what it is? Ah, the good news I have. No, no at the very least, uh, no, they're not going to arrest Obama, and they're certainly not going to shoot them, shoot him. And I'm not advocating violence here. I'm simply saying that, as per our laws about treason, such things occurred. But they're not now, and it's a spiritual battle. You know, it's 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 a spirit. But I, I know of no of no other um, person that has that now. Whether that latent demonic signature that Obama has, where I would call him the evilest of of of, of anyone we've seen, um, whether he's allowed to exercise that, that's going to have to do with the people. You better all turn back to God and fast and get on your knees because that's the only way you're going to solve this. You better beseech the Lord, and I do right now. I just beseech the Lord. I'll pray something because it's going to come true when I pray. Lord, I pray that you expose Obama to the masses and to the world so that everyone can see his foul spirit for what it really is in Jesus' name. Amen. That will be seen. That prayer will be answered right now. That prayer will be answered for the rest of his time on whatever he has in the public eye. It's only a small number of people that actually are really true believers and hardcore, like, uh, <laughs> and you know, you see most of them are having trouble nowadays. Obama's having trouble, his ratings are plummeting and they're gonna go, well now, I prayed that, I know his ratings are gonna go down to the, below Jimmy Carter. 
He is going to have one trouble after another trouble after another trouble. It's going to go against him. Because you're praying. Because your eyes are open and more and more people's eyes are being opened. The good news is there's a backlash brewing and a big one. The bad news is if there's a blessing, are people just going to run back to the satanic... Um, can you, I, I can't even, eh, being in a hive mind, I can't even, you know, being blinded by the God money, being high, higher and higher on what? I mean, what, on what? You can't take it with you. You can't, it can't do it, it can't help you. It can't be your entire focus, money or the lack thereof. Because all it's going to do is ground you into, you're going to be isolated from God. You're going to be isolated from the spirit. You're going to be isolated from the kingdom. You're going to be isolated from life, from the water of life, from the source of life, from the, the purpose of what it's all about. Hey, I'm along for the ride. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's great when people do stuff. And they go, well, because it's fun to do stuff. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you want to get out and make money and stuff. Fine. It's fun to do that. Go ahead. Make all you can. I mean, that was the whole point of this country. You make money, it gets into the system, it spreads around, people get employed. It's a good thing. God blesses it because you're not thinking that you're God, that you're so arrogant that uh, you, you made all this money because you uh, have such great, you know, separate from God abilities. No, it's because you were blessed because you would do things that God wanted done. And so he puts you in that position. You gotta be, you know, gotta go back to being humble about it. Don't, you know, don't carry the world on your shoulders. But to take away all entrepreneurship um, and all risk taking, risk ta private individuals taking risks is what this country is all about. For them wanting to simply eradicate capitalism and saying it doesn't work and regulate everything, they don't have the, enough money to do it. All the Democrat can do is punish you. Punish you for existing. Punish you for being in the wrong back. Punish you for being white. Punish you for being black. Punish you for, for existing. Make you comply with federal regulations. The, the, the state becomes God. Make sure that you never take a risk because it's too dangerous. Let us take care of you. Don't, you know, we'll take care of your family. We'll take care of your children, your grandchildren. Don't worry. And eventually that translates into we need to get your children. And then eventually, well, maybe you shouldn't even have children. You got me? Do you understand what you're facing Yes, the Democrat Party was taken over by the communists. I, I don't think we should call Democrats, um, you know, and liberals anything other than today as communists because you, let's stop this ruse, this, this dance, this charade. Democrats are communists. The Democratic Party is the Communist Party, period. And these people are enemies of you and the way that you want to live if you want to live free and have spiritual religious freedom. That is the freedom to conform to Christ and not to the world. You know, I'm finding that's a very rare commodity in America and it should be frequent. But I'm seeing more, I, I've seen so many people, especially in the cities, all conform to the demon and used, you know, prostituting themselves for their God money and then not having any money but then still being part of the system. <clears throat> In other words, what, so what'd you sell out for? You sold your soul for what? Take care of my family. Well, what's the purpose if daddy doesn't have a soul and he sells out to take care of his family? Well, then the curse is gonna be visited upon your children, you idiot. Don't you get that, you stupid jerk? Only corrupt, 
Fruit comes from a corrupt tree. You're corrupt, so your children will be corrupt. Meaning dead, stillborn, never having lived. You want them to have the same life you had? No, you don't. Well, that's exactly what they're going to get because you failed. The truth was there. The door was there. The love was there. All you had to do is go through it. But you went through this other door and that was there. And they said, all you got to do is go through it. So you did. And now look at you. Everything I said that would happen and every feeling and emotion I said you would feel, you're feeling. Fortunately for you, there is a way back. But I know. You don't want your children harmed. You don't want to go broke. You don't want... Well, go broke. I mean, what was Solomon? He was the wealthiest man in all the world that has ever seen. And by today's standard, he would still be the wealthiest man. And that did not preclude him from wisdom. But he was the wealthiest man. And no pleasure was barred from Solomon. Um, he liked girls. He was collecting them like, like girls, chariots, materials, houses, this, that, the other thing. The finest of everything. The best of everything. God didn't bar him from that. It was not, that was not, you know, wealth was not an issue. Can you understand that? That lesson? Satan doesn't own the wealth. Going to God doesn't mean you have to lose your wealth. It means that the wealth can't be the focus. I see. So you think if you take your eye off the ball, you'll lose it. Well, yeah, it's a leap of faith. That's right. It's a, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a, it's a leap of faith. You don't know what's going to happen on the other side of that door. The Lord might tell you to just give all your wealth away and follow him. He might tell you to build it up in, uh, in the sight of men so they're confounded, saying, how come he's wealthy? You know, and I've, I've been the one who's slaved. I've done everything according to the devil. Everything the devil, everything Satan told me to do, I've done. And then he gets to walk away with the money? No way. <laughs> and on and on and on and every variation in between. And of course, for the day-to-day strugglers, good that your God is not money and, and it, you, it's, a, it's a blessing that you don't have any because if you had any, you would not be with the Lord. And he knows that. He's not keeping you down. He's just keeping you in a position where you will be with him. He's keeping your leg broken, little lamb, because little lamb, you would walk off the cliff if he didn't break your leg. So you have a, a money struggle, but that keeps you in fidelity with him. So that's your blessing. Look, the alternative is horrible. If you lost your soul, you, there's no reason to live other than to be a part of the all-seeing eye. In other words, that they will then manipulate you like a marionette. And these are forces beyond your control that will, um, and your life is no longer your own. You're just there as, you know, a hostile witness to something going on that you don't like. All right, that's it on the preaching. I can't preach any more at you because I, I, f- I find that we've really covered it. I don't know that... Um, that's funny. The way of Christ is the way of truth. And there is nothing... I mean, the way of truth is singular. There's only one way of truth. You know, I mean... you. you if you have truth at all, you have Christ. In other words, no matter where you are on the earth or what your background is or whether you even know the name Jesus, if you have truth, you have Christ, trust me. <clears throat> and the mystery of Christ is that all existence owes its existence to Christ. 
All consciousness owes its consciousness to Christ. All thought owes all its thought to Christ. All knowledge owes all its knowledge to Christ. Everything is scripted in Christ, foreordained to occur, including this sermon or this audio, whatever you want to call it. It's really a pep talk. I have, Your Honor, I have made a case that there is no other way but your way, Yahweh. There is no other way. I make the case every day. I made the case today. And I've proven to you, especially those of you tuning in who, who um, are in, the, in business and in, in, in uh, trying to figure out how to, you know, or, or in politics, trying to figure out what's gone wrong or what's happened. It's nothing new under the sun, man. This is all uh, predictable. Now, there's some good things on the horizon. And because of all the fervent prayer that's been going up. Keep that prayer going and pray more. We need to be a people that prays. We get together in our socials, have a glass of wine, red wine preferably, praise Jesus and pray. And enjoy your food, enjoy your wine, enjoy your conversation and, 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 and give all thanks to the Lord. That's all he want. It's not any rocket science here. Include if you like, put it. You know, the Jews would put an extra, uh, you know, place setting at the table for Elijah. So you could put an extra chair there for Elijah if you like, if that will help you. When you think Elijah, you can also think John the Baptist. But the greatest revered prophet of all, I suppose, would have been um, Moses, right? And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I love you. I'm praying for you, and I will see you next time. Uh, yeah. I, love, I just want to remind you of one scripture. For the Son of Man did not come into the world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved. Remember that? He didn't come here to condemn you or me. He came to lift us up, to save us, to put us on, on the path of uh, to Zion to put give us eternal life. Come on. Oh gosh, the ignorance is what gets people killed. Yeah, I know. I'll see you next time.